Good morning. In this presentation, we will see the functioning of ASA Pro, PNID, and ASA Pro instrumentation, the ASA Pro modules for the design of the process schemes and the datasheet creation. ASA Pro PNID is a simple AutoCAD application. So, beside the standard AutoCAD interface, we have a customized menu with the application commands. Now, let's open a process scheme. And we see that it is made of normal AutoCAD entities, a block and a line. Double-clicking on the block shows the ASA Pro properties, like diameter, material and valve tag. And if I double-click on the line, I see the properties. Number, fluid class, nominal diameter, pressures and temperatures. Let's now take a look at the database. Select Spec Management and Symbols. In this table, we have a list of all graphic symbols that are provided by the software. Each graphic symbol is a block with five description languages and different possible representations. The blocks are all customizable according to the user's needs. In class management, we have a list with all the piping classes we can use to draw our process lines. Here we have a set of components and a sample class. Besides the pipe, we have the valves, gate, ball or check valves. According to the diameter, we have different types. Sometimes they are flanged and other times threaded. Now, let's create the new piping class named W001. Enter a description and add our components. Double click and we will begin with the pipe and here we specify the diameters to use. We enter the minimum diameter, 50 millimeters half inch, and the maximum diameter, 200 millimeters eight inches. Outside this range of diameters, it will not be possible to draw lines. Let's insert our gate valve, which use a range of diameters from 800 to 200 millimeters. We give a tag prefix. This is the name that will be assigned to the valve during the insertion. And these are the technical characteristics. Standard, rating, 150 pounds, so we use ASME standard. And the end type, in this case flanged RF. Now we choose the graphical representation for the symbol. Confirm the insertion of the component and we add another valve, a check valve. Also this valve is flanged and has the same characteristics, only the tagging prefix changes. For smaller diameter ranges, we select another check valve, but with another end type. We choose the TH end type which is the threaded one. Still missing a valve for small diameters, we can choose a ball that is tagged as BL. Therefore, they will be numbered as BL01, BL02, BL03, etc. We start by inserting a vessel. Pick the graphic block position it in the drawing, and assign the tag, TK001. On the other fields, we can add other information, manufacturer, model, and we can paste information directly from an Excel sheet that we've previously loaded into the project, so we can easily manage standard equipment. Resize the symbol using grips, and let's insert a table showing the tank data. The data tables show all the technical characteristics of the equipment. They are standard AutoCAD tables that can be placed at any position, and which are, of course, updated every time we go to modify the equipment data. Now we're ready to create a new line. 
In the line dialog, we can type a new line number or select a line number already existing in the project. We assign to the line characteristics such as class, diameter, pressures, etc. These data will appear in the final lines list. We draw the line starting from the filter and connecting to the pump inlet. Once drawn, this line has a flow sense and connecting information, which are shown on the command line. Through the tag line command, I can tag the line to show the main characteristics. Now let's connect the other lines. With continue line, we continue an existing line and connect it to the pump outlet. By doing so, we reuse the same line number. Now let's generate a new line to connect the tank to the line 9700. The nozzle is automatically generated. Let's go now to draw the last line, a refill line that will take the water to the storage tank. Assign the class, the diameter, and draw the line. Of course, this line has a flow that can also be inverted if necessary. In this case, we keep the default flow sense. The scheme is now complete. The stretch lines command lets you give the final touch to align the position of lines and components. Let's go now to tag the lines through the command tag line. With this command, we are going to place labels that are freely customizable by the user. Add a reducer and with a double click, we modify the downstream diameter from two inches to one inch. Now let's insert the valves. Pick the process line and as a pro PNID, show me only the valves compatible with that class and that diameter. We choose a gate valve. The valve is automatically oriented and cuts the line taking its characteristics from the class. We can see that it is a flanged or socket weld valve depending on the diameter. This is a flanged valve as chosen in class. And here we have a socket weld valve instead. Now let's insert a valve on the water inlet line to the tank. In this case, we're going to insert a ball valve because our class includes also this option. After the threaded ball valve, we are now going to insert a reducer. We slightly arrange the scheme using the stretch line command. And now we're going to change the inlet line diameter. We increase the size from one inch to two inches. The valve is automatically updated from the class because for this size, there was a flanged version. If I set the diameter four inches, I see that the software shows me an inconsistency. This valve is no longer in class. It will therefore be replaced. I delete the old valve and insert another compatible one. With the number components command, it's possible to assign to each object in the drawing a unique tag, which is the sum of the prefix already defined in class, with a sequential number that can be two or three digits. Once components are tagged, it's possible to locate them with the find command. If I select a tag, the component is highlighted. In the same way, it's possible to find a line by selecting a number. With the Generate Tables command, it's possible to generate AutoCAD tables that show the drawing data, a lines list, a valves list. In this case, we have a list showing the valves quantity. 
and a detailed table listing all the items with their different characteristics and their ubication. These lists are customizable by the user. We have a special table which is the Symbols Legenda. Through the Project Options window, it's possible to choose how many descriptions must be shown into the lists. We can set the list to show one or two languages above the five available. Now let's get to the instruments part. We're going to create a level control loop on the tank. We have different kinds of instrument, those directly connected to the equipment or the discrete ones. Choose a connected instrument. This generates a tubing with its own diameter and class. Place the instrument and go to assign a loop number, in this case 020. Select the instrument function, level indicator and transmitter. The location is taken automatically and I specify the physical characteristic of my instrument. Also in this case I can use paste data to feed my fields from an Excel file and that can also be integrated if necessary. Here we have very useful technical data for electrical design. I proceed with my loop by inserting a discrete instrument, a DCS in this case, which will receive the electrical signal of 4 to 20 milliamps from LIT. It shares the same loop and therefore has the same number, but the function in this case is converting, so it is a level converter. And being discrete, its ubication must be specified manually by the user. It's located on TK001. We now connect the two instruments with an electrical signal line. Close the loop with the control valve. Here we have the possibility to choose a set of actuators. We place the balloon that contains the item name and we go to assign a tag to this instrument. It will be a level valve. Also in this case, the ubication is taken automatically. And also in this case, I can use my Excel table to define my object. It's a valve provided by Siemens and besides the standard fields, there are a set of spare fields named custom fields. We connect the valve with the pneumatic type line. And at this point, the loop is complete. Until now, we have graphically changed the scheme, but it's only with the data extraction command that the database is actually updated. At this point, the data will also be available to other ESA Pro modules, 3D piping and instrumentation. The tables already inserted in the drawing are automatically updated, and with the project lists, command, it is possible to export the data of the tables into an Excel spreadsheet. Here I choose the list template, the drawings I want to extract, and click on generate list. An Excel sheet is generated with a structure that I've previously configured. The configuration of this structure can be done through the list templates management dialog. Inside this dialog, it's possible to create a new list template and select the fields you want to show. Specifying for each one the header and the sort order. Now we'll see the advanced features of the ESA Pro instrumentation module, which allows you to generate data sheets of equipment and instruments inserted into a peonid drawing. ESA Pro Instrumentation is a data interface which shows the project items inside a tree view and allows you to edit the data. Let's open a pump. And let's inspect the data within the dataset grid. We see that some fields are greyed out and are the fields that can't be modified from the instrumentation environment. Other fields are green 
and other ones actually editable also from this environment. Other fields are blue and are the ones that exist only for the instrumentation environment. Now we're going to modify some fields shared with ASA Pro PNID. For example, I changed the pump model and some technical characteristics, such as power or RPM. Then I add some data that wasn't yet specified, such as the insulation class. We complete the datasheet, adding also the dimensions. This is a field that didn't exist in ESA Pro PNID and that we've added here, and is mapped in a corresponding cell in the datasheet. Once we've completed the data, we're ready to generate our document. Here we assign a name to our Excel file. In this case, we assign the same name of our pump and a revision index. Here we go to select the template. A template is a normal Excel sheet that's used as a page layout for the data sheets. So any user's Excel file may be converted easily into a smart data sheet. Here we go to associate the item with the Excel sheet. And then we are ready to publish. The publication is the union between the database data and the template we've just selected. An Excel macro is launched and this is the final result. A sheet automatically filled in by the software, where the changed cells are highlighted in yellow. Some cells can also be filled in manually, so I can physically write on my Excel sheet. In this case, it's a simple text cell, while other cells with preset names are automatically filled in by the software. Save the document and close the file. Let's see now what happens to my data sheet when I go to modify the data from the database. I open my pump and change the value of the current field from 16 amps to 20 amps. These data can also be modified through an Excel sheet, so I could export the whole grid as an Excel file that can be changed and then re-imported. For major changes, it's certainly a very useful tool. Relaunch the publish command. And I go to check my cell. At this point, I'll find the data updated. Once finished my work in ESA Pro instrumentation, let's go back to ESA Pro PNID and see what happened. Open the scheme. A notification appears showing me that the pump has been modified by instrumentation. This is the item being modified. If I go to check the data table, we see that the pump data has been updated correctly. Double-clicking, we can see that also the data sheet has been linked to the PNID item. And clicking on the data sheet button, I can open in read-only mode the Excel document. Let's go to Modify Field. In this case, we change the insulation class from IP5 to IP6. And launch Data Extraction. With this command, I'm updating the project database again, so that what I've done in the PNID is seen by the instrumentation module. Once the synchronization is done, we will come back to instrumentation and see what happened to my datasheet. Open the pump. Relaunch the datasheet publication. And this is my updated Excel sheet. The insulation class has actually become IP6. So, if I modify the data from instrumentation, they are updated in PNID. And if I change the data from PNID, they are updated in ASA Pro instrumentation.